If you are interested in pre-ordering and supporting my upcoming documentary, In Search of the Last Action Heroes, detailing the rise and fall of the 80s action star, with contributions from director Richard Donner, writer Steve Niedersouza, actors Bill Duke, Jeanette Goldstein, Michael Bean, Cynthia Rothrock and Ronnie Cox, just to name a few. You can find a link below. These guys are determined to get me. Could they be old enemies who are after you? No, it's not me that they want. They were after the key for the base. Oh, you don't think I invited you here to enjoy an African safari? How much do you know about the Second World War? Enough to know we must never have a third. <laughs> In the later part of the Second World War, when the German forces were retreating out of Africa, one of the garrisons received an order to bury gold, the gold which had been looted from all over Europe in a secret base built somewhere in the African desert. Where do I fit in? Well, the United Nations have ordered me to find the gold for them. And because the bullion was taken from many different countries during the war, it's more than possible they will begin a dispute over the right of possession. So I feel if an Asian did this unofficially, it would be less embarrassing. This way, we can avoid many delicate issues. That is why you are here. Ada's protege of Professor Bush, an expert on African desert environment. Under her guidance, I'm confident you will find your destination. Yeah. Who are these guys? Oh, the one circled was the officer in command of the mission with some of his men. According to these notes, we could still have descendants living around here. I want to look for them. That's useless. The German government have searched everywhere, but with no luck. I'm trying to find out exactly why my grandfather disappeared. You see, I need you to help me. Can I go with you? There's no problem I can see. I'm afraid I disagree. It's not some happy vacation we're going on. And besides, you're related to the officer who was in charge of the mission. Please, you must take me. I'll be responsible for her, Ada. Perhaps the young lady can help you on this mission. I think I'll take a decision this time. You will all go as a team. Operation Condor, Armour of God 2, hit Hong Kong theatres the 7th of February in 1991 under the name Project Eagle and made its video premiere in the UK later that year. Directed by Jackie Chan and costing in the region of 80 million Hong Kong dollars, which when converted to US dollars was about 15 million. It was at the time the most expensive movie made in Hong Kong. There was a lot of hype for the sequel as the first film did very well in Asian markets. Jackie Chan did have some ups and downs with his recent films and was desperate for a hit. Project A, Part 2 and Police Story 2 hadn't done as well as their previous entries despite positive reviews and his recent film Miracles hadn't done as well as expected in the all-important Japanese market. Thankfully Operation Condor was a hit internationally, especially on the video market, but due to its large budget the profits were sadly lower than they had predicted. Miramax had picked up the US rights for the film in 1991 but then hesitated to release it. This was way before Jackie's breakthrough into Hollywood, which didn't happen till the later part of the 90s. They did eventually release it in 1997 through their Dimension Films label after the success of Rumble in the Bronx and First Strike. The new US cut came with a new dub by Jackie himself. They unfortunately replaced the score, created a new intro, removed the song by Jackie during the end credits and cut out roughly 15 minutes of footage, removing large chunks of the humour fundamentally changing the entire tone of the movie. Another issue was the title of the film. As this was released before Armour of God 1, it was just titled Operation Condor, and when the studio decided to release the first movie in 1999, they called it Operation Condor 2 Armour of God, making it super confusing, especially for people who were trying to import the film on video and Laserdisc back in the day. This cut was pretty much hated by the fans, and is considered the worst version to get hold of. 
Thankfully now the international cut is widely available on DVD and Blu-ray, so you can throw away the old US cut if it's in your collection. For UK fans it thankfully retains the original 90s English dub along with the Cantonese version. With Jackie's recent movies such as Project A2 and Miracles not hitting with audiences, he wanted to give them what they wanted, and that was a sequel to Armour of God. Armour of God, released in 1986, has Jackie playing Asian Hawk, a former musician who becomes an adventurer and treasure hunter. The film takes many cues from Indiana Jones and even elements of James Bond. His former bandmate Alan, who seeks his help as his girlfriend Laura Lai has been kidnapped by an evil religious cult as a means of acquiring Jackie's services. The cult possesses two pieces of the legendary armour called the Armour of God and they intend to have Jackie bring them the three remaining armour pieces including the sword which he obtains at the start of the film which he then sells to a collector. Jackie and Alan struck a deal with Count Bannon who purchased the sword and who is in possession of the three armour pieces. They will borrow the armour pieces for their quest to rescue Lorelei with a promise to complete the armour for the Count. Like most of Jackie's movies it delivers on the comedy, action and adventure and was very successful. It's most well known however for Jackie's accident which nearly lost him his life. During filming of the opening sequence, one scene called for Jackie Chan to jump from a wall to a tree branch. The first take went as planned, but Jackie insisted on reshooting the scene. On his second attempt, the branch broke and he fell five meters to the ground below. His head hit a rock, cracking his skull and forcing a piece of bone up into his brain. Jackie was then flown to a hospital to have surgery. As a result, he now has a permanent hole in his head filled with a plastic plug and slight hearing loss in one ear. The footage of the accident is shown during the film's end credits. In the book The Essential Jackie Chan, Jackie revealed with the sequel that he wanted to minimise the fighting elements and maximise the action, saying in an interview back in 1991 that Kung Fu belongs in the past. In an effort to keep up with modern cinema, people want big stunts, he said. Jackie felt he had to compete against the American big blockbusters by Spielberg, Stallone and Schwarzenegger. Operation Condor would be an ambitious undertaking with locations spanning the globe. Jackie dedicated a lot of time to hunting down locations settling on Morocco, Barcelona, Madrid, the Philippines, and the interiors were shot on a soundstage in Hong Kong. There was a huge problem in finding enough Western martial artists in and around Hong Kong to play the bad guys, but they managed to find enough actors to fill in the roles but also keep up with the intense shooting of the fight scenes. Jackie Chan's company Golden Way signed on Dudu Chang to play Ada, who is an expert in African geography. She joined him on his journey to help find the location of the Nazi base. This was the first time Jackie worked with Chang. Spanish actress Eva Cobo de Garcia was cast as Elsa, the relative of the German who was involved with smuggling the gold. Eva would be the first Westerner to be signed on to Jackie's agency, and Japanese model Aikido Shoko signed on to play Momoko, the backpacker who was searching for the meaning of death, and is picked up in the Sahara and joins the team. The late Aldo Sombril was cast as Adolf, who was the only remaining survivor of the Nazi base, and knows the true fate of the soldiers the day the safe was sealed. Aldo worked on over 150 films, and appeared in many spaghetti westerns. And finally, the late Bozidar Shmuljenik returns to play Baron Bannon, who works for the UN, and sends Jackie on his quest. Bozidar also had a role in Project A2. With Jackie taking on the role as director, he didn't want to handle everything. He had other directors handling different parts of the movie, but they had to keep him informed of what they did. But everyone wanted direct orders from Jackie delaying the shooting. Jackie wanted a team around him that he could trust to get everything he needed in the can, and he would only pull rank when he disagreed with the direction the sequences were going. There also was a lot of rivalries amongst the stuntmen, resulting in Jackie having to fire some of them so he could finish shooting the movie in peace. Jackie stressed that Hong Kong directors had to tackle so many different aspects of a production, more so than the directors of American movies. It was a tough challenge and learning curve for him to manage the production. These skills over the years made him a jack of all trades. The film had a long shoot of nearly eight months, driving the budget over three times its original amount. Shooting in the summer in the desert took a tremendous toll on the crew, as they struggled with the heat making the shoot last three months. They even had to stop filming at noon because of the intense heat. The crew fell ill, scorpions came out at night leaving everyone on edge, the camels didn't do what they were told, and dealing with sandstorms made the whole experience miserable for everyone involved. Once they wrapped in the Sahara, Jackie shipped 10 tons of sand to Hong Kong to simulate the location. One of the biggest costs to the production was the creation of the wind tunnel in the Nazi base for the big finale. The movie opens with Jackie enjoying a well-earned break from work. 
and he's doing a bit of tomb raiding and is pinching some ancient jewels from what appears to be an African tribe. But once he drinks on the holy water, he isn't allowed to leave and is quickly forced into an arranged marriage. You can tell how silly this movie is already. He quickly escapes and receives orders to head to Spain to meet Baron Bannon to start his next mission. Jackie arrives in Madrid and is informed of a German commander named Hans von Ketteling and his regiment who buried 240 tons of gold at a secret base deep in the Sahara Desert in Africa before the end of World War II. The commander and his soldiers involved in the operation disappeared under mysterious circumstances by request from the United Nations. Bannon gives Jackie this unofficial mission to locate the base and recover the gold. Jackie is given a key to the base which appears to be unlike any other key he has encountered before. He is introduced to and partnered with Ada, an expert in African geography. As an incentive for Jackie, once he discovers the gold, he is promised a small percentage of the treasure. Jackie and Ada, while researching the soldiers at the base, discover that some of their relatives may live nearby. He locates one and goes to investigate the home of Elsa, who is related to one of the caretakers at the Nazi base. He finds what he needs, but Elsa suddenly arrives home, and he attempts to avoid being spotted as he quietly makes his escape. Two Arab men who are searching for the location of the gold suddenly attack her in her home. Jackie comes to the rescue and manages to get rid of them and comes up with a pretty feeble excuse as to why he is there. The next day he visits a locksmith and learns that the key is intricately designed for use with a special code. After leaving the locksmith, Jackie is then chased by an army of black cars across town. They appear to be another group after the location of the gold and they desperately want the key, but he successfully manages to avoid capture. Elsa arrives at Bannon's mansion and wants to join Jackie and Ada on their mission as she is in search of her great-grandfather Von Kattling. Realising she may be important to the mission, Jackie brings her along. Upon their arrival in the Sahara Desert, the expedition team picks up the backpacker Momoko, a Japanese woman who Jackie bumped into earlier in Madrid. A tad convenient, I must say, bopping into her. As they make their way across the desert, they get attacked from bandits, the two Arabs in search of the gold and a group of mercenaries who are on their trail who are led by a man in a wheelchair who knows the true mystery surrounding the Nazi base. Now with the International Cup being the most common version to get hold of, there is a slightly extended version for the Japanese market. This Blu-ray has a somewhat better picture, but the print is very dirty and doesn't appear to be in good condition. This version has most of the scenes extended by a few seconds or by a minute in most areas. As the audio is in Cantonese and the subtitles are burnt in in Japanese, it's hard to know if these extra scenes improve the story somewhat, but it's interesting to see the additional footage nonetheless, and a good addition for fans of the movie. Now there was never a soundtrack release for Operation Condor, as far as I'm aware. Tracking down original scores for these movies can be very difficult. It was a nightmare trying to do City Hunter a couple of years ago, and the only way to get the score was to take it from the rear channels of the 5.1 mix. Even for this review, I've had to use music from the first film. Some of Jackie's classic movies such as Police Story did get a soundtrack release on vinyl, as did Armour of God. Both scores composed by Su Ting Lai, but he didn't return for the sequel for some reason, and Chris Babida took on the job. Chris's score is very cheesy and sounds a tad cheap in places. The score is going in the direction of complementing the comedy, so there aren't many moments for it to be played seriously. The main theme for the film is very catchy and works in its favour, but overall the score lacks the quality of the music provided for the first film. I think the majority of Jackie's movies have a song at the end where he sings. I always love this part. A new song by Jackie and a montage of the outtakes showing you Jackie messing up a complicated fight or someone making a silly mistake. It's always fun to see. Because these songs are in Cantonese, I have no idea what he is saying, but it doesn't really matter, the songs always sound great. The song for Operation Condor may not be to the level of, say, Police Story, which is one of Jackie's best, but it's memorable and it seems to fit the tone of the movie. Operation Condor, like City Hunter, were the first movies I watched starring Jackie Chan. It was the early 90s and my friend from school, who was in the year above me, was starting to collect Jackie's back catalogue that had become available in the last couple of years. I was at the time starting to build up my collection of Van Damme movies, but once I saw Jackie in action, I knew this was the next level in martial arts slash action movies. Seeing Jackie do all of his own stunts and taking part in these elaborate fight sequences was just so thrilling to see. This wasn't happening in American cinema. We got sprinkles of it in Big Trouble in Little China, but for the most part, fights just weren't this impressive. Operation Condor has a very straightforward story and is easy to follow. Like a James Bond adventure, his mission is laid out to him from the start, 
and you just need him to get from point A to point B to complete his goal. Now along the way he encounters many challenges to stop him from getting to the base. The plot is certainly not original, but it doesn't really matter as long as the journey itself is entertaining, and thankfully the film is a lot of fun. I know there are fans who are purists who prefer the original Cantonese dub and enjoy watching Jackie's movies with the subtitles on, but for me I just love the old English dub. The actor they cast to dub Jackie just works so well for me. I don't know why, maybe due to that being the first English voice of Jackie I heard, it just seemed to stick with me over the years. With the Miramax redub in 1997, with Jackie's real voice, it just sounded so odd. It's great Jackie made an effort to do a new recording, but it just changed the tone and feeling of the movie. It sort of diluted its wackiness. The old 90s dub is pretty weak with its casting choices, however. Elsa has the funniest voice provided for her, which generates a lot of the laughs. The syncing of the voices is way off as well. The funniest moment of the dubbing is when she attempts to keep the mercenaries at bay and accidentally triggers the gun. Better believe her, boys. She shoots like a maniac. Not a move! Ah! 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 Why are you so ah! awkward? Keep your hands... Oh! 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 The film is littered with stereotyping and the dubbing doesn't do the movie any favours. Back in 1991, I don't think this was at all a problem. Well, it may have been to some people. I can imagine it was just seen as a light side to its comedy and not to be taken seriously. Jackie always strives to push the comedy and it should be seen as such. But if this was released today, it certainly would come under fire from certain sides of the internet. Operation Condor takes a slight step back from Jackie's regular output. The fights aren't as long through the first and middle act. It isn't till we get to the end in the hidden Nazi base, that's when it really gets impressive. It follows a similar structure to the first movie. It doesn't heavily rely on fight scenes to entertain you, it throws in more stunt sequences. This direction of the movie in its use of action is clear that Jackie is trying to compete with what Hollywood was doing at the time, and I think he succeeds in many areas. The whole wind tunnel sequence is a standout piece, as Jackie and the bad guys fight against the wind and use it to their advantage. Jackie clearly finds ways to bring out the comedy in this scene and even attempts to be Superman at one point, which always made me chuckle. As a kid, I thought this was all done by the power of the wind turbines, but if you look closely, you can see the wires. Still very impressive wire work, however. The Hong Kong industry excelled at this effect for years. I do get a sense the plot wasn't long enough to warrant a suitable runtime, so a number of scenes seem to have been made up on the spot to drag out its length. Once he's on his mission, the plot basically runs out of steam through the middle act. Now with many of Jackie's movies, you are mostly there for the action. You aren't too concerned about the plot necessarily. It's good to have that balance, however, of interesting dialogue that moves the story forward and have it interspersed with action to keep you engaged and entertained. But as Jackie and his team keep moving forward to the location of the base, they are attacked from essentially three groups. It ends up being one group too many. Once the bandits arrive out of the blue, they take the women and attempt to sell them off to the highest bidder. It just doesn't involve any storytelling, it just drags out the movie. And then they return to their camp the following morning, and the rest of their team, who we are never introduced to, are killed off. But the movie wants us to show sympathy to these unnamed characters who popped up during the montage scene, and were just standing there in the background. The scene with the bandits only served the purpose of getting Jackie away from his team, for then the mercenaries to kill them off, so then there are less characters to focus on once they enter the base. Jackie's character spends a lot of his time trying to deal with three women who are all in need of saving. Elsa and Ada are written to be the clumsiest of the group. With the first movie, Jackie is teamed up with Alan Tam, so they play off each other for the comedic scenes, and they have to help each other in attempts to save Lorelei. It gave Jackie more to do in the story. Jackie in this movie doesn't really get much to do, but instead is essentially a bodyguard. This may have been a choice on Jackie's behalf to give himself less dialogue, so he can focus on everyone else when directing the scenes and taking part in the elaborate fight choreography. I just feel despite enjoying the film, I still don't know the character of Asian Hawk that well. His backstory is very loosely put together in the first movie. As mentioned at the start, he was a pop singer who then turned into this James Bond special agent, which makes no sense. It's like Simon Le Bon is suddenly a double O agent or something. Uh, sure, why not? If you've never seen the first movie, Operation Condor makes no mention of his past, so the movie doesn't really make any great attempts to flesh out the character. Now for years I was hoping Jackie would do a third film in the series. He had done many sequels to Police Story, so it would only be a matter of time till he did a third Armour of God, and he eventually did, called Chinese Zodiac. 
I was so excited to watch it and grabbed it as soon as it came out to Blu-ray, but sadly the film was terrible. I was really disappointed and quite frankly gutted. Its story was utter toilet and the action was average for the level of quality you come to expect from Jackie Chan. The young actors who joined Jackie on his adventure are so annoying and the whole photographic look just reminded me of a cheap music video with its glaring saturated colours and it didn't really feel connected to the series. It only felt associated due to the fact it has the character of Asian Hawk in it. It's a movie I would highly recommend you avoid if you are a fan of the Armour of God series. For fans of Jackie Chan, I'm sure you've seen this movie and it's in your collection either on Blu-ray or collecting dust on VHS somewhere in your loft. Jackie Chan's movies are always entertaining, sometimes for the wrong reasons, usually down to the hilarious dubbing or the old fashioned slapstick humour which feels like it's come from a 60s carry on movie. That is a very big one you have there, is it not Mr Woolsey? Eh? Oh this! There is always a level of quality you come to expect from him when it comes to the action and Operation Condor certainly delivers on those expectations. The fights and stunts are wonderfully staged and shot in the cinemascope format and as always are edited perfectly so you get to see everything in shot. Nothing is hidden away in the editing. All the martial artists on camera are experts in their field and seeing them doing what they do best is the highlight of the film. Operation Condor is a very silly movie but I always have a right laugh watching it. It's certainly not Jackie's best film and it's clear he is trying to entertain a large majority by providing as many different things as possible to deliver a summer blockbuster type movie to guarantee a hit. So there should be enough in this movie to entertain you if you've not seen it before. Just make sure however you watch it with the English dub for the extra laughs.